In this video I'm going to finish off insulating the foundation for this kiln. Now before pouring the kiln I laid down 5 inches of EPS foam so that gives me about R25 between the ground and the super thick slab I poured. The slab ended up being around 14 inches thick. I then wrapped the sides of the slab with the blue skin you see and the blue skin actually goes under the sill plates. And I say sill plates because there was two of them for this purpose. So the bottom sill plate will be left exposed so that I can nail my foam into it now. And that's how, that's what you're looking at. So the, the upper wall is overhanging the lower sill plate around two and a half inches right now. So that leaves room for two inches of foam to get nailed in and then a half inch layer of stucco coat to protect the foam. So it'll just look like where the blue skin ends, it'll just be concrete straight down. The stucco coat I'm going to reinforce with some fiberglass mesh, and mesh will also be nailed to the same sill plate. You know, the field of the stucco coat and the foam, I'm not going to put any fasteners through, so there won't be any fasteners going through the foundation blue skin. I'm just going to let the, the drain rock and backfilling hold the bottom portion of the stucco and foam against the foundation. All right, let's get to work. I'm gonna use up this foam from the carpenter ants. I'll just trim off their tunnel parts. And I'm gonna make extra sure that I protect this foam from any future ants or any other insects, termites, whatever. Because I know they love it. Too bad that was on time lapse. You missed a good one. You might be able to tell. We'll see. We'll see if I got it. But I just about smacked my face into this wall. Well, I, I totally smashed my face into this wall. I like pushed the foam in, my hand slipped, and boom! <laughs> we'll see if I get a bruise up there. Screwed up my neck too. <laughs> Ouch. Anyways, it's going good. It's fitting tight except for smashing my face and hurting my neck. I need to go get some more washers and uh, then I'll wrap this and then that's the fiberglass mess that I'll cut and put on it.
So next I'm going to trim off this hardened foam now and then I gotta cut strips of this fiberglass spider lath. By the way, I threw these sticks in, boards, threw these boards in just to keep the foam from pushing the foam board out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. solid now. That should help also hold the foam board where I want it. All right, and now I'll foam board, staple the bottom all the way around in the seams. And I'll also go around and nail the top, of course. And um, I'll probably throw in, I'll nail it every foot, but every other, it'll be one of those 20 penny, four inch stainless steel, and, the, and every other one will be a three inch stainless steel. So this foam board stapler, it's the same one I used to put down the hydronic tubing for the slab for the kiln. And that's what this is designed for, but I thought I could use it in this application. And I don't know, I think it turned out alright. I'm sure there's probably something better, but for having it on hand and I had extra staples, this seemed to work. So that's part of the reason why I call it an experimental kiln. <laughs> we'll see how these foam board staples hold up over time. It should be okay because all the gravel and weight of the earth is going to be holding it against the foam anyways. All right, I'm ready for mortar. So I got everything taped off. Got all my staples in. Got nailed off every foot. 
So now I'll just spray the crap out of it. Okay, that's a wrap on that. Oh, I gotta pull out the plastic. Gonna touch it. I definitely got the front pretty nice. I skimped a little bit on the back and then I waited a little long to trowel it, so it's a little ugly. <laughs> this is what happens when you try to do too much too fast. But this is all gonna be slab in here, so you'll see maybe like you know three inches of it, and that's about it. But I'm pretty happy with this. It looks pretty nice. We'll see how much it cracks and how it holds up. Good morning. It's another day. The day after uh, doing this. And I just walked around it and kind of looked at it for the first time. And uh, it looks looks decent. On this side, I'm, it looks better than the other side, that's for sure. You're only going to see really like just a couple inches of this. When I started, I was just going to, I sprayed as much as it took to fill up the, what I thought was needed. And I only had six bags. And so that meant that I had to get this whole side down with the two bags that I mixed first. And I only got to about there. So I just decided to make the rest of it go around and because I was, I was being lazy. I just wanted to put this in there to kind of strengthen the bottom and also to mainly to keep bugs out and stuff. 
you can see here that it was getting dark and I, uh, I didn't even notice that I didn't trial this part. Uh, but anyways, so I spread it too thin here. When I put the lath on, on the front, uh, on the other sides, I'd, I'd put the plastic staples in at first. And then I went in and nailed off the rim. But on this side, I nailed off the rim first and then put the plastic staples in. It was definitely a mistake. Because I ended up, it was a little loose and there was kind of bubbles in the fiberglass mesh. So that you could see there's several big bubbles of the mesh that were poked popped out. The other problem was I took a break because I was tired of doing the other sides and it set up a little too much and so it was hard to trowel on top of the loose net on top of not having enough and luckily I did the top looks like okay enough that it should be all right. The slab will probably be right around here but I mean at least I got the, the this front side is the most important gonna see the most sun and elements and I, I got it the thickest so so that's pretty good and all around the back will be, will be slab and on the other side will be slab and it'll be covered by a roof and this I got pretty thick too so with the exception of forgetting to trowel it and then leaving the bottom open I've got that little bag of mortar I think I'll mix that up so I can fill in all that fiberglass and protect this foam because I want to put a I got some scraps of that drain board and I was going to throw that up here before I backfill to help protect this from moisture. But that'll allow ants to be able to go right down in and build a home if I don't seal off all the foam all the way around. But just all these little spots here. I'm going to just fill that in. Okay, let me figure out where I'm gonna get started.